Jason's uh, conjecture. So. Thank you very much, and I thank the organizers, in particular Giorgio, for this nice invitation. So, yeah, as Luke said already, I will talk about Strassen's conjecture, and Enrico already gave a very nice introduction from the matrix multiplication point of view, so I will avoid doing that, but I will just start by writing the statement of this conjecture, mainly because I want to fix the notation. So, yeah, I should also say, first of all, that this is joint work in progress with Jarek Bocinski. <coughs> okay, let me start by um, <coughs> writing down the statement of Strassen's conjecture. I'm going to write it for bilinear maps, so for three-way tensors, and this is the case I'm going to talk about. Enrico instead talked about symmetric tensors and polynomials. Um, okay, let's take three vector spaces, A, B, and C, and then we take um, direct sum decomposition, A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, and C1 plus C2. And then what I want to do is to take a tensor EJ in AJ, tensor BJ, tensor CJ for J equal 1 and 2. So I'm taking two tensors that live into skew spaces. And I'm going to ask whether the rank of the sum of these two tensors seen in the big space is equal to the sum of the ranks. So that's Strassen's conjecture, Strassen's additivity conjecture. So this is what we would like to prove or disprove, <laughs> that the rank of P1 plus P2 is equal to the rank of P1 plus the rank of P2. OK, so let me first of all write down what we know already, what we knew already about so some positive answer to this question, which is due to Yarek and JM in a paper from 2013. So they proved, well, that paper was not about Strassen's conjecture, but on their way they proved also some cases where Strassen's conjecture is true for the rank of three-way tensors. So they proved that whenever the rank of P1, the first of my two elements, is at most equal to the maximum between the three dimensions of the space involved, A1, B1, C1. And by this number, I just mean A1 is the dimension of capital A1 and, and so on. So whenever the rank of P1 is at most <coughs> this number, then let me just give a symbol. Let's call it. SAC, Strassen additivity conjecture. And under this hypothesis, they, they can prove that SAC holds. And this has very nice consequences that I will tell about, but let me first just briefly sketch the proof of this, of this lemma or proposition. So it's, it's, really, it's really short. We can First of all, assume that this tensor P1 is concise. And what does it mean? Well, it basically means that if I take the image of A1 star inside B1 tensor C1, this is injective. This is not the image, but the map is injective, sorry. And the same for the other two maps that I can take by uh, swapping the roles of the three spaces involved. So this I can always do. I can always assume that P1 is coincised. And then in this particular case, I, I, then I want that the rank of P1 is exactly equal to the maximum of the three dimensions. I can also, well, order the three dimensions. This is also without loss of generality. I can also assume that this is exactly A1, which is bigger or equal than B1, and then C1. Yeah. Uh, so, OK, so these, these are my assumptions to simplify the problem, to simplify the proof. So what do I do? Well, then I take P, 
the sum of my two tensors. Now P1 lives in such a space and P2 is any other tensor living in a skew space. I take the sum of the two of them and then I write them um, with a minimal, I write a minimal presentation as a sum of rank one tensors, a alpha i tensor beta i tensor gamma i from 1 to r, where r is the rank of the sum, of some number which is corresponding to the rank of the sum. And then I just basically take, well, I just basically check what happens <coughs> if I take the projection from the big space to the space where P2, uh, sorry, where P1 lives. Not where P2, let me write it, it's better, at least I don't mistake the indexes. So I'll just take now, I just take the projection from the big space to A2 tensor P2 tensor C2. And what happens? Well, under these assumptions, I can immediately see that um, P1 lives in the kernel. This, this, the space where P1 lives is in the kernel of this projection. So uh, maybe I just write. This is contained in the kernel. And in particular, P1 is inside here. So this means that the image of P1 is zero. And then what, what happens to P2? Well, A2 tensor, these, these are obvious things, trivialities. This, so if I take the projection and restrict it to this space, then this is an isomorphism. So this is an iso. So this means that the projection of P2 is itself. And so if I put this information together, then I get that the projection of P is, is P2. That's what I'm doing. I'm just projecting to one of the two uh, tensors. So this means that the projection of P is equal to P2. But also, <clears throat> I can also write it. <coughs> like in this way as a sum of projections of rank one things. So since by conciseness I can assume without loss of generality that the first A1 of the alphas are for they form a basis for A1, then then I can just write this like uh, summation I from A1 plus one to R projection of alpha I tensor beta i tensor gamma i. So this just by, by writing it in these two ways, then I can just conclude because this immediately will tell me that the rank of P2, which is this projection, is at most r minus a1. And I'm done because a1 is really the rank of P1. So this is at most r minus a1. And this is, by assumption, the rank of a1. So, so I'm done. In this case, thrust and conjectures is true. So there are <coughs> very nice but also easy consequences, immediate consequences of this lemma. So if I just look at this assumption, what I can immediately say is that, Rollery, is that if A1 is bigger or equal than the product <coughs> of B1 and C1, for instance, then, then SAC holds. Because again, I can assume that such a tensor living in a space with these dimensions is coincise. So in particular, this means that I can take A1 being equal to the product of B1 and C1, and then, and then, and this is satisfied. So, so I get that all these, all these cases satisfy Strassen's conjecture. Another corollary maybe a corollary of the corollary is that whenever C1 is 1, I'm assuming that they are ordered by the big, from the bigger to the smaller, so A1 is bigger or equal than B1, bigger or equal than C1. So if I take the smallest to be exactly 1, well, what do I get here? Well, I just get the triviality. So also in this case, uh, SAC holds. So these are easy consequences. But there is another very interesting corollary that one obtain, obtains by applying this lemma to a particular case, which is also, also this is in, in from the same paper by Yarek and Lansberg and um, JM. So uh, if I take P1 to be a tensor in this space, 
Now I'm using the C notation because uh, it's convenient because I need uh, some relation among the dimensions. So I take C B1, so a complex space of dimension B1 plus 1, tensor C to the B1, tensor C2. Well, if P1 is a tensor belonging to this space, then also in this case, Strauss and conjectures is true, no matter what the second tensor I want to take is in Q space uh, holds. But this is not just as easy as previously, because here we need to know what the rank of such a tensor is. But the rank, well, this is, this is a pencil of matrices. I have dimension two here. So I can think of this element like a pencil of matrices of size B1 plus 1 by B1. So I can think of it, this element, I can write it like this, S, 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 and then T. So I'm, I'm using the, so the, the way to compute this rank, the rank of such an element, it was, it turns out to be B1 plus 1, and this was computed by, now I'm sure that I will mispronounce all these names, Burgesser, Clausen, and Schokrollahi. <laughs> Let me just, in 97, 1997, they proved by using the Kronecker normal form of, of a pencil of matrices of this form, they proved that the rank is B1 plus 1. <coughs> and so we are done because, again, the rank of this tensor is equal to the maximal dimension. So by, by that lemma, we are done. <laughs> so this is also another nice example. No matter what the other vector, the other tensor is, we get that additivity holds for, for the rank. So, but now let's, let's discuss our, our results. So with Yarek, we managed to generalize this kind of uh, results to, to prove that Strassen's conjecture holds for a bigger family of cases. So I will first of all state <coughs> our theorem, and then I will give a sketch of the proof. And this will be the first part of my talk. And then in the second part, also depending on how much time I have, I uh, will talk about the border run version of Strauss and conjecture for three-way tensors. So I will discuss a little bit that other case <clears throat> in the second part of my talk. So this is our result. Okay, so. The statement is very easy. So if C1 is equal to, so again, I'm assuming that A1 is bigger or equal than B1, bigger or equal than C1, without loss of generality. So if the smallest dimension is 2, well, I can say at most 2. If it was 1, we said it already, that the conjecture is true. So basically, I can. Just to, by completeness, I can just state it like this. If the third dimension is at most two, then I have additivity. So, proof. So, I will split the proof in claims. So, I will claim things and then I will show the claims afterwards. So, claim one. Um, okay. So I claim that there always exists a rank one matrix. Let me call it X in, in the image of this map, B1 from A1 star to B1 tensor C1. So if, if I see my tensor as, a, as such a map, then I, I claim that if I take the image of A1 star inside this space of matrices, I would always find a rank one matrix inside there under the assumption that this is at most two. And uh, claim, so assuming that this is true, this is really, really an easy, we'll see later. Uh, then claim two is that there exists a minimal <coughs> presentation uh, 
uh, of P, that is the sum of P1 and P2, has in Q in rank 1 tensors, Q1, QR, rank such that one of them, let's say the first one, belongs to the first space, belongs to the space where P1 lives, A1 tensor B1 tensor C1. So such that um, Q1 times A1 is this way, alpha an element in A1, tensor a rank 1 matrix is in A1 tensor B1 tensor C1. And then Assuming that this is also true, assuming both of these statements, then what do I do? Well, three. Well, now I basically just prove my statement by contradiction, by just proving that if there's a counterexample to the Strass and conjecture, so if additivity doesn't hold in one example, then I can always get rid of this rank one thing and decrease the dimensions involved and find another counterexample. But I will assume that the counterexample I start with is minimal, so this will be a contradiction. This is a summary of what I'm going to write in the next two minutes. So assume that P, my, my, my tensor that I'm studying, is, let's call it a counterexample to SAC. So, Assuming that the rank of P is strictly less than the sum of the ranks, P1 plus rank P2. And also, I'm also assuming that P is minimal with respect to this property. This property. And satisfying the same assumption on, on the on the dimension. But you need a minimal rank. Hmm? P is a minimal rank, or everything's minimal. Or... No, P, P. I'm just saying that P. I, I'm assuming that minimal. Minimal with respect to the to the property that it doesn't satisfy additivity and it is contained in a space like that. Minimal rank or minimal. This guy, this guy no, not order. minimal rank. It's more, it's more or less. Let's say it's more or less. Uh, Minimal dimension um, minimal of, the space. of the space, is, yeah. Minimal. Okay. But rank is going to work as well, so whatever you want. Okay. And minimal in, in the sense. In that sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, then, then if I have all of this, then I just take P prime. So I'm going to show that I get a, a smaller. So in a smaller space, I'm going to get another such counterexample, P prime, that I will call P prime. So P prime, I just take it to be P minus Q1. So I'm just getting rid of, rid of this rank one element that lives in the first space, that I know it exists by, by the previous claims. So I'm now just taking P1 being defined by P minus Q1. Well, this, it is straightforward to see that the rank of P1 Decre decreased by one with respect to the rank of P. Of course, I removed the rank one thing, so um, this is exactly rank of P minus one. But then I can also write it as a sum of an element in A1 tensor B1 tensor C1 and an element in the skew tensor space. So P1 prime plus P2. When P2 is the same as before, I'm not touching P2 at all. And P1 is, P1 prime, sorry, is, yeah, the obvious choice, P1 minus Q1. And I know that this guy lives in A1 <coughs> tensor, B1 tensor C1. And then, yeah, and what happens to the rank of P1 prime? That's what I need to see. <coughs> well, it may decrease by one, but it, it may also not decrease at all. But for sure, it is at most 
rank of P1 minus 1. I don't know exactly what happens, but for sure this is satisfied. So, uh, well, now I just put together these inequalities with this inequality, and I get that the rank, so I get that, uh, that the rank of P prime is bounded by, it's strictly less than, well, just than the sum of the ranks of the tensors I started with minus one, but this is exactly rank of P1. This is at most, sorry, rank of P1 prime plus rank of P2. And so I got a smaller counterexample, so this, this gives me a comfortable. So in order to finish the proof, I have to show that the claims are true. So, so to prove. Probably want to sum in the very middle of the board. Yeah, hmm? first negative sign should be plus, there should be plus. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, to prove claim one, well, this is just a dimension count because I want to show that if I take the image of a one star inside here, I want to show that it contains a rank one element. So what, I go what I'm going to do, well, I'm just, uh, well, recall that B1 is less or equal than A1. This is my assumption. But also, I'm assuming that A1 is at most two times B1 and not equal to it. I mean, I, I, this I didn't assume anywhere, but the point is that 2 is exactly, this is C2, this is C1. So I know already that Strassen's conjecture is true when A1 is equal to the product. So I, I would not be proving that now. So basically, I could have assumed this from the very beginning. So I'm just taking cases where this is strictly less, because I, otherwise, uh, we, said, we said it already in the, in the previous in the previous blackboard or whiteboard. So, okay, so this, this I have, this assumption on the numbers. So what do I do with it? Well, now I just take V1 to be the image. I want to study this, this space of matrices and I want to find the rank one element inside here. So wh what is the obvious thing to do? Well, I just take the segre <laughs> variety inside that space, which is the, the variety of rank one matrices, and, and I just check if they intersect, and, and they will. <laughs> That's just a dimension count. So, well, I like to take the projectivization of this, and this is, since I'm assuming all, all of these, and I'm also assuming that P1 is coincised, this is just an A1 minus one dimensional projective space. This is a P A1 minus one which is contained in the projectivization of B1 tensor C1, which is a B, uh, 2 B1 minus 1. And now I'm going to take the segre S, the segre embedding of uh, yeah, P1 <coughs> times P C1 segment embedding of the projectivizations of the spaces I'm considering. This also lives here. And then it has dimension. I need to know the dimensions of these two spaces and I, because I want to check if they intersect. So this has dimension. The first one has dimension A1 minus 1. This has dimension B1. See, this is just a P. This is a P B minus 1 cross P1. So the dimension is, is B1. And then, and now we are done, because this plus this is bigger than this. And now dimension of, yeah. This is B, well, A1 minus 1 plus B1, that by assumption I know it's bigger than, than the dimension of the ambient space, so I'm done. There, there, exists, uh, there exists a rank one thing inside here. And then we are left to prove claim two. So maybe just to you can use board number three if you want yeah. to four. Okay. Uh, <coughs> yeah, first of all, I no want to notice that the rank of P is bigger or equal than A1 plus A2, that this is just by coincidence. 
the, for the assumptions I'm making to reduce the problem. So this, uh, is it clear? Should I? Um, the rank of P1 is bigger than A1, bigger or equal than A1. The rank of P2 is bigger or equal than any dimension involved in P2. And then, of course, the rank. I mean, this, this is this is true. So now I want to prove that if P, that there exists a minimal presentation of P such that one of these rank one elements is actually living in, in this, in the first space, A1 tends to B1 tends to C1. So I, I just want to use this rank one matrix that I just found. So, um, OK. P is the sum of rank one elements, R of them. And now let V inside B1 tensor C1 be a vector space of dimension R, which is basically spanned by this rank one elements. So it will contain the image of A1 in the big space. Um, spanned by matrices. Well, now I, I notice that we, we just want to notice that W, which is the image of a, which is the applet, the image of a star in the map in yeah inside B tensor C, that this is contained in V because V is spanned by this. I know that P, I can write it like this. So for sure, if I take the image of A1, then I just stay inside here. But this, this V, one can show that it's the direct sum of V1 and V2, W1, W2, sorry, defined in this way for, the, for both spaces. So, and in particular, I know that inside here, I have a rank one element. So, so I can, I can, find the basis of V for which X is one of the elements of the basis, so I'm done. Because I want to prove that P, I can write it as a sum of rank one things, and one of them is, is inside the, 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 first, the first space. So I'm done. OK, so um, yeah, this is the end of the proof of our main result. And now I wanted, as I promised, I wanted to spend a few words about um, the border run version of Strassen's conjecture. So basically, I can, one can, well, this has been discussed already several times to, during this workshop. One can uh, replace. Elisa, uh, so, yeah, is, so I just want to ask so if you know the Strassen conjecture, is it also true that the only minimal decomposition comes from the, uh, from the sum end? Meaning that, you know, can, you, can I get another minimal decomposition that mixes things? That's what Luca was asking. Yeah. Oh. yeah, so the strong. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, I want to say, yeah, I mean, I cannot exclude that there exists a different decomposition that mixes up things. But it, what I'm using here is that one of them must be fixed somehow. That but has it, has it been observed <coughs> that such a thing happens? This is obviously false for matrices. But, but otherwise, we don't know. Actually. Yeah, well, to, to yeah but in order, yeah, if, if you wanted to get a counterexample, I think that would be the only way you found it to mix things up and then suddenly find rank one elements which are no longer only living in one of the two skew spaces. I mean, if you slice your, your box, then if you just start from P1 and P2, like they are, from, they are given from the beginning, then all slices, they will only contain elements either. Either, I mean, if this is the shape of a slice, then element would be either here or here. That's, that's what you start with. But now you want to rewrite your box with somehow and check if there's some way to, to, to find a rank one element that involves something here and here. So it must be involved in something everywhere if it has to have rank one. And that's. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't happen when you have yes, something x plus y squared. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the point. Yeah. But it may happen that you have something that has, say, finally many decompositions. Yes. Yeah. That's... I see. So it's not no. So even even when you can prove the conjecture, the stronger statement is potentially true, but it's not only one. Yes, true. Not legal. I see. Strong.
So, uh, if, 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 what you that's sensible assumptions, and I don't want to yeah. specify what assumptions you're interested in. I mean, as Pablo points out, there's obvious counterexamples unless you add extra hypotheses because it's false for matrices. So you could just add a one dimensional vector space <coughs> and it would still be false as far as conjecture. Right, but they, you know, ten, ten series one, once you go beyond matrices. Uh, yeah. No, but you can convert them, you could just add a dummy extra vector space. Oh. And then you could masquerade that you added a dummy vector space by adding in yet another tensor that, you know, so, so there, you have to have some kind of extra hypotheses that uh, make it not obviously false. Should I continue? Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so I was saying that one may just naively replace the symbol rank with the symbol border rank just by adding an underscore and ask whether this is also true <laughs> if, if uh, the border rank version of Strauss and Conject additivity is true. Well, no, it's, in general it is false and there is a well-known family of counterexamples that has been discussed this morning during the lecture by JM, Sean Hage, Example or counterexample, so the answer is no. In general, no. There do exist counterexamples, but what I'm going to do is to give positive answers, to, to, to find examples where it actually holds by, by using equations for second varieties. But let me first, yeah, uh, briefly come. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Counter example. So the well-known one is by Sean Hage, that it was already written down on this whiteboard this morning. Let me just uh, recall it briefly. So in the same notation that I was using, these are the dimensions of the spaces. So we are taking a one being equal to the product of B1 tensor C1. We know already that in this case. Just by writing this, we know that the, bo the wrong version holds. But this is actually a counterexample for, for the border rank. And what, what else? A2 equal to 1. And then B2 equals C2 equal to the product of B1 minus 1. C1 minus 1. Then you want to take a tensor of rank A1 and a tensor in P2 of border run, sorry, uh, B2, I think. And, and, and then, yeah, and these are all counterexamples. And the first case, the smallest case, is. So you're saying there is a counterexample in those dimensions, but you're not saying that every possible direction. No, 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 that there exists a counterexample in this setting, with it, yeah. with just by thinking a tensor in this. No, 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 no. So the first case happens when I have these numbers. This is like uh, 7, 5, 4 are the dimensions of the big space. And this is the splitting 6 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 2 plus 2. And the proof, well, it has been discussed already. The point is that you want to take a 1 plus 2 points on the segre, such that a 1 plus 1 are independent. And then you want to take curves with initial points, these points that you start with, and you want to take derivatives. By taking derivatives, you get points on the tangent spaces. And by taking second-order derivatives, you, get, you obtain two such tensors for which the, the, the border rank of the sum is, uh, I think it's exactly a 1 minus 1. So it's, it's less than, than, than the sum. So this, in this way, this is going to be a family of counterexamples. But so there is another. Even a smaller counterexample to, to uh, Strassen's conjecture for border rank that was discussed and communicated by JM. It was found by a student of him, um, Yonggui Guan. He's in the audience. And I'm just giving you the numbers just to show you that this is really smaller. 4 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2. So he found a tensor in. C4, tensor C2, tensor C2 of border rank 4, and a tensor in C1, tensor C2, tensor C2 of border rank 2. But the, tens, the 
border rank of the sum is not six, but, but five, this we proved. Oh, so with Yarek, and then th these exam I mean, the proof is basically the same idea as Sean Hage example. It's, it's performing the same kind of arguments and all. And also, this belongs to, to a family, actually, of counterexamples in the same way. So you can take, I just wanted to yeah, write the smallest counterexamples known. But as I said, I want to talk about positive answers. So I want to show examples where this is actually true. So, uh, OK, so now I see I'll, I still have 10 minutes. So I'll, yeah, I'll t at least I give one and then, OK, so I will stick with this notation 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1 are the dimensions. So I want to take a tensor P1 in C3, tensor C3, tensor C3 of border rank 5. So I'm taking a tensor that doesn't live on the fourth second variety of P2 times P2 times P2, which is a hypersurface. So I take something which is outside of this hypersurface. And then I take in the other space, well, I don't have enough choices. This is a C tensor C tensor C, so I just take a run one tensor. So, and I want to show that the, the border rank of the sum of these two tensors is exactly six, which is the sum. And in order to do this, I use equations for the sigma four for the fourth second variety to the product P two tensor P two tensor P two so Strassen's degree nine equation. So that I'm going to write down. So use Strassen's uh, equation for sigma 4 of P2 and times P2 times P2 in, C, in P26. So well, actually, I'm using what is called Ottaviani's derivation of this. So the point is that, OK, I take a point P1, a tensor P1 in, in the first, so in C3, tensor C3, tensor C3. I can think of it as a point on the segue embedding of the, well, I'm abusing notation. This is well, the segue embedding of this tree, OK? So I'm a little confused. You want to show that the border rank of the sum is 6? Yeah. But you're going to use equations for sigma 4. I'm starting, yeah, let me, okay. I, I'll get there. <clears throat> I'm starting from a vector that doesn't satisfy that equation, and then I get to a vector that does, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, so let me slice it. So I take a tensor in C3, tensor C3, tensor C3, and I slice it in this way, alpha 1 tensor x1 plus alpha, alpha 2 tensor x2 plus alpha 3 tensor x3 where the xi's leave our matrices in C3. So this is P1 and C1. Uh, these are the slices in alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, 3 are a basis for A1. That is a C3. And then I, take, I can take the contraction operator P1 star. So parentheses, I'm going to give the matrix corresponding to this. So you don't should, shouldn't bother too much about this, but this is something that goes from. It's a composition of um, of the way I write a tensor as. So I basically write P1 as a tensor from B1 star to A1 tensor C1, and then I tensor by A1 in both um, sides. I'm tensoring this map by the identity, and then I take a projection into the wedge product. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is just a notation, but I'm just writing the matrix corresponding to this. So given by the block matrix, that let, it, let us call it M, that depends on x1, x2, x3, three matrices, like, like in this case. But I mean, this is just in general. You can think of them as variables. So I'm writing this. 0, x3. I mean, most of you will recognize for sure this matrix. This is what you write when you want to write Strassen's degree 9 equation for the sigma 4 
<coughs> x2 minus x1, 0. So I just take this map, which is given by a block matrices, and each block is, is, is an odd. I mean, these are nine blocks, nine matrices. And then <coughs> the lemma that we are going to use, I guess I quote Giorgio, 0, 7. Uh, so if A1 is, a, is equal to 3 and B1 and C1 are bigger, yeah, I'm sorry, now I'm inverting the, pardon, I'm inverting the <laughs> order. Yeah, I noticed it only now, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so if P1, an element that lives in, in this space with this dimension, if P1 belongs to the sigma R, of the corresponding segre embedding, then, then the rank of this matrix, of this matrix is bounded above by R times A1 minus 1. And in particular, when all three spaces have dimension 3, which is our um, case, I mean P1 is going to be something inside here, then in particular, um, P1, then in, in, in this case, I take R to be equal to 4. That's the fundamental, I mean, the important number in this. And I get that the rank of this matrix is 8. Just, just yeah, plug in, in numbers in, in this. But that's actually an if and only if. And this is, and this is the degree 9 equation for the sigma 4. So if I take now a tensor like this in C3, tensor C3, tensor C3, and I write it in this way, then this the determinant of this matrix is going to give me the equation. So that's how I check is that that point lives in the sigma 3, and I'm starting from a point that doesn't. So now I'm starting. So th this is just variables. I mean, this is just a formula. But then when I put in the formula my three matrices, then I'm assuming that this rank has this matrix has full rank 9. And um, this is my assumption. But now, so I want to, so now this is about P1, but now I want to prove that P1 plus P2 has rank 6, has rank 6. So, and for proving that, I'm going to use the first part of this lemma. That's why I wrote it. No, just for, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the following way. So that's a very, I, I would say, geometric argument, because now I just take, um, yeah, now I'll just write in a convenient way P1 plus P2. Well, P1, okay, is again, it's alpha I tensor Xi. That's what I wrote already. But then I also yeah, add the fourth element where, so I just need to say what X. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, I should change notation because this is now a matrix in a four by four matrix. So yeah, let me do it properly. So now I write P as this, where Yi is a 4 by 4 matrix that is given by yeah, Xi, a 3 by 3 matrix, and then zeros for I equal 1, 2, 3. So I'm just adding a row and a column to, to the Xi that I started with. And now, Y4, well, it's 0 here and only 1 here. 0 and 0. So this is 3. I'm just writing P in a compact way in order to have something that I can yeah, manipulate in order to use what is written on this board. So continue. So now my P is this tensor, and I want to show that the board around is 6. So what do I do? Well, I take the projection from A tensor B tensor C. So this is C4 tensor. This is the big space. This is a 444 dimensional space. I project it to A1 tensor B tensor C. So I'm just, I'm just uh, contracting the first factor. And how do I do that? I send alpha i to alpha i for 1, 2, 3. So I just don't modify that part. And I said alpha 4 
to the sum alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. So what happens to P when I apply this projection? What is the image? What is the projection of P inside this space that now has dimension 3, 4, 4? Uh, so what happens to P? Well, um, P prime, that is phi applied to P, the projection of P. So this now I write in this way. It's a sum alpha i tensor. And the sum now goes from 1 to 3. Now I'm in a C3 space. Tensor y i prime, where y i prime is just. So the point is that I have three matrices in this 3 by 3 block and zeros elsewhere. And then I have one matrix, which is 0 there, and, it, and only have one. And if you follow the projection, what happens to this one? It's going to be this one it will go to this position for all the other matrices. So that's just y i prime is just y i, sorry, x i with 1. And then 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. That's what I get. So I'm just replacing the 0 by 1, basically. So that's, that's my new element. And I can consider this contraction operation associated to p prime. So this is something that is described by a matrix, which is given by this matrix where I put the y i prime inside here. So, so what I get is this, y1 prime, y2 prime, y3 prime. So I'm just taking that and I'm replacing xi by yi prime. So this is that. This is it. And then I can manipulate. So I'm interested in computing the rank of this matrix because then I want to use this lemma to, to conclude the border rank of p actually in the way back. So by, by knowing this rank, then I want to conclude this. So well, I need to compute this rank. So I can you know, manipulate this matrix and by swapping rows and columns and whatever. And then this is equivalent. This matrix turns out to be equivalent to this. And this is, I mean, this is not, this is not crazy. I mean, this is <laughs> somehow. It's clear. It's clear, right? So then I get zeros, and then here I get m one one one. Obviously, right? So now I know this rank because this is 9 and this is 2. Well, think of this matrix with 1s and zeros. This is going to have rank 2. So this rank is 11. So the to total rank is 11. But 11, I can write it as 2 times 5 plus 1, I think, or 5 times 2 plus 1. <laughs> so, if <laughs> so 5 is r and 2 is. 3 minus 1. So <laughs> this is not satisfied, then this is not satisfied where r is, is 5. So I get that the border rank is 5 plus 1, 6. So I get that the border rank of p prime is, what was it? Yeah, the projection is 6. And then I just conclude by noticing that the border rank of p is bigger or equal. And I'm done. So that's, that's an example where, where border version of, so I think I'm running out of time. So I just want to mention that it's, one can, for instance, produce more examples by, for instance, replacing these ones by twos. So if I do this, then I just, uh, I want to take elements in C2, tensor C2, tensor C2, then I can either choose a, with border rank 2, and I want to prove that the border rank of the sum is 7, but then an element inside there, it can be of border rank 2, it can be either on the secant, the secant line varieties or on the tangential variety, no, it doesn't matter. In both cases, you do this trick, you move around these numbers, and then you get something a little bigger here, but still the rank is big enough in order to let you conclude the same. And, uh, and this is just using this most famous equation for, uh, probably for secant varieties, but one, this I was planning to talk about, but I think now my time is over, but one can also use, I'm just writing that no, we also know how to, we also know an example in the same dimension. So but sticking in the same, but with the same dimensions, instead of starting with a point outside of the fourth, Second variety, now I take one inside. 
and the same for P2, and also in this, so I want a point which is on the fourth, but not on the third second variety. And in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Friedland's equation, because equations for the sigma 3 of P2 tensor P2 tensor P2 are known. But then I can also, I know that the sigma 4 of P2 tensor P2 tensor P2 has to satisfy some equations. And these equations are given by the adjoint matrix. It's like a nice formula that involves the, the x1, x2, x3. So I would do the same trick. So I'm just assuming that this proof would be by contradiction. So I assume that border rank of the sum is, uh, instead of 6, is 5. So it doesn't satisfy, well, I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, another way, I mean, to produce other examples with, with smaller, yeah, and, and one can play around with the known equations and, and find some more. But, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, so, more questions for Lisa? I don't know, but maybe some of these techniques that can be applied uh, in the symmetrized the stress and conjecture uh, that uh, was considered in the previous uh -huh. talk by Enrico. I don't know if, if you tried. Or... I haven't, no, absolutely uh -huh. haven't thought about it. Um... Good. Yeah. Could be a project. I mean. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Using equations for the Veronese, you mean? And exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, we haven't thought about it. Uh, so. uh, just a comment. Uh, if you could know, for instance, that there is some identifiability, probably the proof of the conjecture should Can be. Could you speak louder, Luca? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you know that there is just one uh, decomposition, probably somehow the proof of the conjecture would be easier. Of course, your tensor is not a general tensor. In the yeah. sense it's a block tensor. Yes. Though if you can prove some, that, for instance, this is not a singular point of the second variety, then probably there is some, yeah. something comes uh -huh. more, com comes easier to prove for this kind of conjecture. So it could be a good idea. To yes. To try to see how general is your block tensor from that point. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you again, Elisa.